to be an honor to see all the dignitaries and all the participants who have uh, gathered here today uh, for the inauguration ceremony. And uh, I, Yashwura, on behalf of the entire FOSI team, welcome you all to the inaugural ceremony of this mixed signal circuit design and simulation marathon using eSIM. So before we go ahead with the ceremony, let me just give you a brief about FOSI. So the FOSI project, which stands for Free Liber Open Source Software for Education, it promotes the use of FLOS tools to improve the quality of education in our country. Our aim is to reduce dependency on proprietary software in educational institutions. The FOSI project is supported by the National Mission on Education through Information and Communication Technology, Ministry of Education, Government of India. So let me begin the event uh, by welcoming Professor Kanan Maudgalia. Uh, he is a faculty in the Department of Chemical Engineering at IIT Bombay and Iraq and Mehru Mehta Advanced Education Technology Chair Professor. He is the Principal Investigator of the FOSI project. I will now hand it over to Professor Kanan. Kanan, sir, over to you. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you. Uh, Yes, thank you, Kunal. Uh, do we have the, the speakers for the event? Can somebody check? Has the chief guest come? Uh, yes, can you quickly check? Uh, sir, so chief guest would be joining a little late. Actually, I have, uh, uh, they told that they'll be joining by 5.50 because uh, sir, director sir is a little busy. So that's the reason, but they'll join by 5.50. Okay. Yeah. So we can get uh, started then. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, so I would like to welcome you all to this uh, amazing event, uh, Mixed Signal uh, Simulation Marathon. Uh, using eSIM and very luck. And we have um, been uh, working with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, other teams as well. Uh, we will get to see them as we go along. Let me just give a brief idea of uh, the FOSI project. In fact, uh, Yash already told about uh, you know what we do and so on we promote open source software uh, we promote uh, in particular uh, eSIM, scilab python open form uh, dw sim open modelica qgis uh, in fact lately we have started with uh, uh, overleaf as a collaborative uh, uh, way of typesetting using latex and then, of course, we also promote some uh, graphical systems, uh, graphics and animation packages like Inkscape, uh, GIMP, um, Synfig Studio, Blender, and so on. Uh, we have also been uh, promoting uh, chemistry software. Uh, in fact, school level uh, laboratory uh, systems, uh, Chem Collective Labs, um, and also physics experiments, and so on. The objective is to train uh, a large number of people, promote, identify good software and promote them amongst uh, students and uh, faculty in the country. And uh, we have um, been getting about uh, one crore page views in a year. That um, in a nutshell is uh, about um, the FOSI project. Now, eSIM, is a software that we put together by uh, combining KiCad and ng-spice. Using KiCad, we can create uh, schematics and uh, create netlist, send them to ng-spice, do a transient simulation, for example, right? And of course, uh, using KiCad, um, you can also create Gerber file and you can uh, get them fabricated if one wants. We also made um, eSIM suitable for mixed signal simulation by integrating it with GHDL. 
Uh, we use the XPyce capability. We just uh, replaced inbuilt ng spices, that is XPyce's capability to do a discrete simulation with uh, GHDL by calling out, but using the infrastructure already available in ng spice. So that was about GHDL. Um, but lately, we have been working with uh, 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 Steve Hoover of Makerchip to bring in Verilog as well. So uh, we can uh, do the discrete uh, uh, simulation using Verilog and then combine it with, with um, analog simulation capability of NGSpice. So this is what uh, this is, uh, uh, this in a nutshell is about the capability of eSIM. Uh, one of the things that, um, why this uh, mixed signal simulation is important is, I recall uh, talking about uh, eSIM in a college in uh, uh, Mumbai in Father Agnell, for example, um, I think it was 2013, 14 timeframe. At that time, we used to call eSIM as uh, OSCAD, uh, the name which the uh, which have been changed because uh, uh, some people complained that uh, it sounded like some other proprietary software. We changed the name to eSIM. After the workshop was over, the teachers there said that if only it had mixed mode simulation, we could uh, they could use it. So we identified that to be an important uh, requirement so that we um, took the help of Professor Madhav Desai and got uh, GHGL integrated. Now with um, uh, Steve Hoover's help, we got uh, VHDL, uh, we got Verilog uh, included. As a matter of fact, it is also possible to have, um, you know, microcontrollers also, for example, every um, instruction can be written as a, uh, as a C program, for example. In fact, it can be crowdsourced um, uh, using, um, this capability, we are able to, in fact, uh, interface with several microcontrollers as well. And um, one thing that we have been doing is to uh, get contributions from the student community. In that sense, this uh, project is quite different from several other open source, uh, um, you know, promotional uh, uh, projects. Because typically, what people do is they come up with an open source software. And they say, okay, use it, here it is. But that's not enough as far as we are concerned. We have to show that a large number of people use it. We have to show that a large number of people contributed. And we also have to make sure that all the contributions are made available to the public. So we do that. In fact, using vSIM, we have about uh, close to 500 uh, circuits created by students from students and faculty from across the country. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we can now um, take schematics created in PSPICE and automatically convert them into uh, eSIM, for example. Um, and then similarly, we can do it from LT SPICE to um, uh, eSIM. Basically, SPICE is at the, at the back end. But then how do you convert the, uh, the schematic that is where the automatic converter works. So we have a large number of things uh, converted. And so you can see that uh, we have spoken tutorials on uh, uh, eSIM using which people can learn in a big way. After that, we ask them to contribute uh, uh, circuits, which we release as uh, open source to all the people. So they also get to see the breadth of uh, breadth and depth of uh, eSIM's capability. After that, we go to um, events like, um, um, you know, marathon. This is the second marathon. Um, so I'm very happy that it is going well. We have uh, more than 1,700 uh, uh, students who have registered uh, with that uh, brief uh, background on FOSI and eSIM. Uh, I would like to um, hand over to Yash, but before that, I would like to remind everybody that this uh, project is funded by the Ministry of Education, Government of India, through the National Mission on Education, through ICT. We are very grateful to them. Uh, over to you, uh, Yash. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. 
so now I would like to call Mr. Kunal Ghosh. Uh, Kunal Ghosh is the director and co-founder of uh, VLSI System Design Corp Private Limited, a cloud-based learning platform for VLSI education, which has trained close to 40,000 plus VLSI engineers across 152 plus countries in 40 different languages. So Kunal has previously worked with organizations like Qualcomm and Cadence, and Kunal is an alumni, alumni of IIT Bombay. Kunal, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Yash, uh, for the nice introduction. So first of all, uh, how, many did you, how many of you uh, uh, like the promo video? Type yes if you, if you like the format of the promo video. Just type yes in the chat box. All right, good, good. So many of you love the promo video and uh, you know, it takes a lot of effort to make the whole thing. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Kunal Ghosh and welcome to the you know, Mixed Signal uh, Circuit Design and Simulation Marathon using eSIM. This is a great year for our country. I mean, this is the third marathon, uh, third hackathon that we are doing. Uh, uh, in, in the past, we have done uh, two hackathons, one on, um, on, on multiple uh, technologies and this is the third one that we are, uh, that we are going to do over here. So, so really glad and really great year for for all of us so uh, this is the uh, description and uh, you know this is the whole agenda i think this is what something is here she's going to cover already so we have uh, we have uh, many people who are joining uh, in this in, in this particular inauguration purpose of the marathon okay it was a, it, it's a story uh, you know when we were trying to look for uh, people for our projects uh, we actually talked to uh, uh, people who were like seven years plus experience in the industry uh, and industry people don't feel bad about it uh, this is my personal experience uh, i was just discussing a project about uh, directly i jumped into a topic of mixed signal and uh, they were like they've just heard the terms they know okay this is mixed signal and this and that but they really uh, uh, the fundamentals were not right and 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 that that basically uh, gave us a purpose gave us a reason to uh, to uh, indulge into mixed signal and the purpose was that uh, it's our fault that the seven years experience engineers in the industry who have spent uh, tons of uh, hours in the in the in the commercial tools they don't they are not aware of about mixed signal the reason for that is the fundamentals were not there in the right shape in the colleges itself so that's why this uh, marathon and that's why we have all the students introducing we are going to introduce mixed signal to all the students over here who are going to go into the industry um, in, in very soon. And uh, that's uh, we have taken that as our own responsibility and trying to indulge mixed signal skills into everybody. So that's the purpose of this marathon. And the marathon would not be possible without a great team. I mean, if you see uh, this particular screen, uh, it has got the team building, you know, the team getting motivated to do this kind of activities. It's, it's really um, uh, something, um, it's, a, it's a tough task. And I'm very happy to have a great team who worked day and night for the last eight months on this particular project. You won't believe it was like every every weekly, there were twice or thrice calls and, and the kind of uh, updates that the team has shown, um, amazing. Uh, we have Shumanto Kaur. I think you will be interacting with Shumanto Kaur um, uh, day and night uh, during this particular uh, marathon. Uh, we have uh, Madhuri Kadam, uh, Nalin, uh, Shashi Rekha, uh, the web developer. So you are going to uh, you know, upload and download a lot of things from the uh, website. So uh, Shashi Rekha over here is, help, is over here to help. Uh, Steve Hoare, of course, he has been a long time partner for, for us, like three to four years now. Uh, and he, uh, he has helped a lot in, in, in setting up the whole thing uh, into the eSIM uh, e uh, port tell Rohin, Charan, um, they, they were all, uh, you know, some of them were, um, they were interns with us and now they are doing great tasks uh, uh, in, the, in the industry and, and overall helping the industry to uh, in the open source domain. Mukesh Nadar, of course, uh, very energetic. Um, all the uh, platform which are going to use uh, for developing the mixed signal projects, uh, they are going to use a platform and uh, he is the one uh, to look out for uh, once if you get stuck with anything. So uh, something about uh, um, something about us. Uh, so our hackathons, uh, VSD is a is a company that was formed uh, uh, ten years back, and uh, we were very uh, uh, we were very you know uh, lucky to have uh, mentors like uh, Professor Madhav Desai from IIT Bombay and Professor Kama Koti from IIT Madras, and um, amazing mentors. I mean, it was all a vision that came together. Uh, uh, very few people know actually that uh, you know uh, it was uh, uh, the, the analog part. It was a vision that was set when I was 
was uh, working uh, uh, with uh, with Professor Kama at IIT Madras, and uh, we had a lot of discussions. And there was a real problem statement that uh, analog uh, and mixed signal is not getting uh, introduced to the student level. So that's where you know these things came up, and he mentored us in the right way. Finally, uh, once we came out of um, uh, the project, we, we built the whole thing, and uh, if we discuss with uh, Professor Kannan and uh, Steve Hoover, and and finally the whole thing is out. So it's a it's a, it's a great project. It's a great visionary vision by by all these uh, uh, you know top professors of our country. So the, our, our format has been ex accepted uh, by by the Ivy League colleges. So if you see over here, we have been uh, there are there are industry um, uh, industry has been speaking about the uh, the this particular content and format um, uh, for for many years now. Uh, we have Professor David Patterson. We had Professor Andrew Kang. Professor Yon Rabe. Uh, Steve uh, Steve Kosher, uh, CTO of Skywater, and uh, then we had uh, Navid Sherwani, uh, Mike Vishal. So they are all industry leaders, and they have been uh, speaking about our formats um, uh, for, for a very long time. So we're really happy to be able to serve uh, the community with the, with the best of the minds of the world. And so we're re really happy about it. Uh, so, so we also did some workshops uh, at, at a national level. So first ever workshop on the uh, device physics uh, process uh, simulations was done by us at NIT Manipur. Uh, device physics is a, is, a, is a concept which is going to come out very soon because um, the India planning a fab lab or a manufacturing lab, uh, most of the fundamentals which is, uh, which is there uh, in this particular slide or in this particular workshop are going to be reflected and there will be a very a big need of this particular topic within our country. So we started uh, this kind of workshop way back three years back and and you know we are going to continue with uh, this very soon the largest online vlsi open source video workshop was done by us uh, there are close to 50 universities and 1800 participants um, had joined uh, this is like you know uh, before even pandemic so we, before even pandemic uh, we were online we were we, were, we had a very good online presence uh, so uh, th this was one of the uh, largest online workshop. There was second largest online workshop that was again conducted by the National Knowledge Network. So India has a, a, a very good network um, uh, and infrastructure. Um, it has it has a very good setup of uh, National Knowledge Network. So we had done uh, another uh, workshop a uh, long time back, uh, having uh, 1,400 participants across uh, 42 universities. Um, so Silicon Institute of Technology, it's a, it's, a, it's a next hub for uh, open source research. We have been um, working with uh, uh, Professor Saroj, and, and this particular institute is something which promotes uh, uh, tape outs. I mean, uh, that, that was pretty much unbelievable for us. Uh, we have heard tape outs from uh, the IITs, but uh, but then hearing something from Professor Saroj that he's promoting tape outs, he's doing tape outs in his colleges uh, with the students' uh, help, uh, and that's that's something really amazing to know. So uh, we had done a short workshop over there as well, uh, the first open show, uh, open source media workshop at Mumbai. It was live streamed uh, all over the world. That was done from uh, through Don Bosco Institute of Technology. Again, uh, Professor Sudhakar Mande, he is a IIT Bombay alumni, uh, very helpful, very um, very uh, you know energetic person, and helped us to conduct the whole workshop around this one. There was a workshop that was conducted at IIT Bombay campus on the Ajit processor with uh, Professor Madhav Desai. Uh, this was done something uh, you know uh, uh, for for uh, uh, his uh, set of students. Largest online risk five workshops. You would be surprised to know that we had done uh, the 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 largest along with Steve Hoover. We had done the largest online risk five workshop. Uh, close to you know many many participants. Have, we have trained close to 500 participants. Uh, they have developed a risk five course and 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 uploaded on uh, risk five uh, So um, very exciting about about those days. We had the youngest risk five participant. This participant was in eighth grade. You won't believe this person actually a seventh grader and eighth grade. Uh, so you won't believe this person actually uh, started at this particular age. We don't motivate uh, people to start at this so early, um, uh, you know. But eighth grade and seventh grade or something, they build the whole risk five core from scratch um, using um, from under our mentorship. Uh, I mean that that really proves the the quality and the grade of the um, the workshops that we did uh, with uh, with the uh, with this participant. So we were really happy and we were really proud at that point of time that we are able to communicate what we had to a to a eighth grader and the seventh grader.
Of course, this is uh, one of one of our dream teams. Um, uh, as I said, uh, we have worked with Professor uh, Kama uh, Kamakoti a long time back. So this was one of the uh, photos that was taken uh, at ISA. Uh, you know, we were demonstrating uh, some of the uh, uh, some of the products that was that were based out of the Shakti uh, uh, microprocessor. Uh, um, all of you might be aware that um, uh, Professor Kamakoti led the whole effort uh, about uh, Shakti microprocessor, and um, uh, this is an image taken uh, 2018. Um, uh, Sunita Ma'am. Uh, and CDAC. So this was a very, uh, uh, it's a dream team and a dream image that we had thought about 2018-19 uh, that it can something that can solve the uh, real semiconductor problem in our country. And uh, we have worked a lot together. We have worked and done uh, many things uh, back then. And it's a dream team to come true. Uh, again, with Professor Kannan, we had done the uh, largest circuit design uh, marathon, uh, uh, few, uh, I think last year. And we had close to, uh, uh, I think, I think 2,500 participants had registered and we got close to 130 IPs. I mean, it, it's so, uh, using, using, a, using a, a real process a foundry technology node, uh, Sky 130. Uh, Steve Kozier, who is the CTO of uh, uh, Skywater, he was, he was pretty much amazed at how can, how can uh, 138 IPs be released in a period of two weeks. I mean, that was, uh, that was pretty much amazing for him, uh, but at the scale at which we, we had done, uh, that, was, that was pretty nice. And uh, uh, yeah, recently uh, we also did uh, uh, the largest uh, uh, commercial tool workshop. So with, uh, we had done a circuit design uh, hackathon uh, with IIT Hyderabad, and it's still going on. Uh, there, there are many beautiful designs that have come out of this particular hackathon as well. Uh, that is that has been done, and that is that is going to be closed very soon. Okay, so that's that's about our uh, our company, and uh, totally we have got close to 13,000 subscribers, um, uh, um, uh, 4 480,000 uh, active users. Uh, and we have got research, collab we have done research collaborations with uh, IIT Bombay, IIT Madras, IIT Guwahati, IIT Hyderabad. And uh, these are the four top IITs that we have worked with. And yes, as, as uh, Yash mentioned, we have our uh, courses in, in 47 different languages. And it varies from free to uh, free uh, free to zero dollar to three dollar to five dollar to ten dollar to seventy dollars to triple nine dollars. Every range is something which we have, so we can uh, we can accommodate everybody. Okay, all right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, so let's begin the marathon, uh, and I hope uh, we are able to uh, deliver uh, uh, the uh, the right content to all of you, so that we also get a lot of mixed signal uh, uh, circuits and mixed signal designs from all of you guys, and and hopefully we see that uh, the mixed signal uh, fundamentals are are even if there is even if there is one student who is able to do this marathon uh, in the right way, we are happy. I mean, at least at least somebody got the idea, and that one student can propagate to three more, and 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 so on. So that's the vision and all the best everybody over to you Harsh. Over yeah to thank you uh, thank you Kunal so moving ahead I would like to invite Mr. Steve Hoover who is the founder of Redwood EDA Steve has worked for uh, industry leaders and has contributed to the silicon is found in many top 500 supercomputers he has an experience of more than 18 years in this field and today he'll be talking about maker chip which is a powerful very log design environment Steve, over to you. Thanks, Yash. Yeah, I really just wanted to quickly introduce myself and share my background and welcome everybody to the workshop. So welcome, uh, congratulations on you know taking the first step of signing up. I think the workshop should be a really great opportunity to add to what you're getting in the classroom, give you exposure to some real world technology, you know, using open source and free tools. Um, and really this workshop is, you guys are gonna be the first to touch this platform, right? To, to use uh, eSIM integrated with uh, digital circuit design of Verilog with, with my tool, uh, MakerChip, which I'll share very briefly and you'll learn more about in the workshop. Um, so you guys are gonna be the first. This is a chance to you know, do something that you don't get an opportunity to do in the classroom. And, uh, and learn from industry experts and, and struggle a bit, right? <laughs> I mean, this is the first time we're giving the workshop, which means uh, we're gonna hit new problems and that's good. Um, you'll help us to iron out issues with the platform and by going through those sorts of struggles, you'll learn. And uh, you know, as a result of those struggles, you'll come out the other end with something meaningful, something that contributes to the world something that no one else has ever done before and uh, a really great experience that you'll learn from 
you know, if you put in the, the investment. Um, you know, really we're, we're building a community here and you're part of that community now, so welcome. Um, let's see, so I wanted to give a little bit about my background just so you understand uh, where I'm coming from, what I'm bringing into this picture and, uh, and who you're talking with when we uh, talk on Slack and, and in Zoom, et cetera. So most of my career was as a, a logic designer. Uh, I worked for companies like Digital Equipment Corporation, working on alpha microprocessors, um, and and uh, then Compaq and Intel. Um, and I I always felt uh, that even though I was working in a world that was cutting edge, that was high performance silicon, you know, what could be more exciting than that? Working on uh, these in the top 500 supercomputers and so on. The tools that we were using to do that uh, in many ways were inadequate. So um, once I'd built up enough uh, industry understanding and uh, enough money in the bank to walk out the door from Intel, I started Redwood EDA and began focusing on improving the ecosystem for circuit design. And that was the genesis of Redwood EDA. Um, and you're going to get to use the, you know, the, the tools and uh, maybe a little bit of the design methodology that I'm introducing to the industry. So really, my focus is advanced circuit design techniques, um, the design methodology for, you know, if, if we look back, RTL has been around and it's been the de facto design methodology for over 35 years now. I'm working on the methodology that will support the industry for the next 35 years, right? RTL is really past, uh, past its expiration date. And, uh, and this workshop is going to give you some exposure uh, depending you know, whether you're focused more on analog or digital on, um, on the next generation design methodology and how the industry is really gonna tackle these big problems. Of course, you'll be working on smaller circuits. Um, so even though my technology is really targeted at that advanced, um, you know, advanced design teams, it also has very strong benefits um, in terms of being a more approachable design methodology. And that's where I've worked with Kunal to introduce workshops. You know, he mentioned the students who were middle schoolers who were able to design a RISC-V CPU using the technology. Um, so it's got real strong benefits on kind of the low end of the spectrum as well, the approachability of the technology, you can just jump right in and learn about it. And uh, uh, so actually, if I have permission to screen share, I can really quickly just give you a, a taste of what you'll be exposed to in the workshop. Uh, looks like I'm disabled at the moment, Kunal. Yes, you can. Um, okay. So just to give you a quick taste, I'll go to makerchip.com. So this is a, an online IDE for circuit design. It supports Verilog and transaction level Verilog, which is the language extension to Verilog that I'm focused on for introducing this new design methodology to the industry. Um, what you're going to be using in this workshop is the eSIM now integrated with MakerChip. So MakerChip is the digital circuit design component of MixSignal, right? MixSignal being uh, analog circuits combined with digital circuits, simulating the two together. So uh, the digital um, simulation is provided by Verilog simulation. And to edit your Verilog models, you'll be using MakerChip. You can use Verilog or transaction level Verilog. Um, most likely you'll primarily be using Verilog. We've prepared a bunch of Verilog uh, IPs or circuits that you can leverage in your projects. Um, but you have the freedom to use transaction level Verilog as well and explore that. And eSIM um, providing the uh, analog simulation, ng-spice based simulation and the integration with MakerChip. Um, so just to give you a, a quick uh, demonstration of the maker chip side of it, the digital side of it that you'll be using in the workshop. Um, let me pull up an example just so we can see something in, in simulation. 
Um, what's a good one? Let's do something visual. Let's do a sorting network. So this uh, model has loaded in my text editor. I'm not going to go into the, the syntax and all that. You'll have time for that. Um, but the Makership environment gives you everything that you need to, uh, to work with this model, to simulate it. You get a waveform viewer and a block diagram of your circuit. You have this uh, representation of your code so that you can navigate the model and you can interact with this. So if I click on this swap signal, that highlights over here in my block diagram so I can uh, better understand my circuit. And also if I open this up, um, not sure what hierarchy it's in, but it also highlights in the waveform. So as you're working with your model, you can run simulation, you can explore the waveform. If you find something that looks wrong in the waveform, you click on the signal, you find it in the block diagram or relate it back to your code, um, figure out what's going on and fix the bug. Uh, we also have this very nice visualization feature, which is uh, unique. So no one else has um, visualization of this nature where as a circuit designer, you can, um, you can create visualization of your circuit to help you in the development and debug process in a way that's meaningful for the circuit. So this particular circuit is a sorting network. It's taking in a, a vector of input values and it's feeding them cycle by cycle through this sorting process. And we can see what happens to a vector of numbers over time. Um, so some cycles are invalid, which is the gray cycles. Here's a cycle that's presented with valid numbers. And we can see over a period of seven cycles, what the logic network is doing with these numbers, um, sorting them so that at the output, we end up with a sorted vector of numbers. All right, so just a quick taste of the Makerchip platform that you'll be using in the workshop. Um, and you know, as you go through the videos, Sumanto will be giving you more details about how to um, use this platform and how the digital circuits that you design in this platform integrate with the analog circuits. Um, but at this point, I just wanted to give you a, a quick taste and uh, get you excited about the opportunities that you're exposed to in the workshop. And again, welcome you to the workshop. <clears throat> um, <laughs> actually monitoring the usage of Makerchip right now. And I see many of you have jumped onto the platform, which is great. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, welcome. And uh, I'll give it back to Yash. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. So uh, we, we uh, guys don't worry, we have a session by Steve and so, uh, Kunal towards the end. So you can, you can probably, they'll, they'll explain you in detail. So yeah. Anyways, so uh, just wanted to check if Mr. Sagar Sharma has joined. Uh, Sagar Sharma, sir, have, um, I, I think he will not be able to uh, mute, but uh, what is his uh, ID? Uh, any, any, um, I have, uh, I don't know, Sagar Sharma. I am not able to actually locate him in the participant list. So. Yeah, I think he has, hasn't joined. If, if uh, 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 Sagar Sharma has joined, can you just type? Can just message me? I, no, I don't think uh, it's trying. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, fair enough. So uh, next we'll just uh, go ahead. Uh, now I would like to call uh, Mr. Nishit Gupta, who's a scientist in the Microelectronics Development Division, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India. He'll be talking about the Chips to System program of the Government of India. Uh, Mr. Nishit. Can you please take over? Yeah, I Thank hope you. I'm yeah. audible. Right? Yes, yes, you are. Yes. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, so excited to see uh, such a huge participation. Uh, about 250 plus participants have joined today. So welcome all. And uh, please accept my sincerest uh, thanks for having me here during this inaugural event of this uh, mixed signal circuit design simulation marathon. So while I can uh, talk at length about chips system program initiated by MIT as an endeavor to uh, generate uh, skilled manpower at bachelor, master's and uh, research level in various areas covering entire spectrum of the VLSI and chip design activity. 
I will uh, sum up within next three minutes for our uh, chief guest, Professor Kama Gode, to get sufficient time to inaugurate and address the participants today. And uh, starting from uh, uh, the point where uh, uh, Kunal has actually left, right? Uh, I, would, I would like to specially highlight that our country has lived an era uh, wherein it had a negligible uh, global design market share, despite being uh, called a design uh, progress by the world. Our country has also lived an era wherein uh, over 90 to 95% of the electronics engineers land up in the software jobs, despite VLSI uh, domain uh, providing most attractive career growth, highest uh, pay and uh, global opportunities. And there are various reasons to that, uh, which have been well debated at various levels and well understood. So uh, most of you uh, might have heard about the recent push by the government of India towards semiconductor. However, uh, many of you uh, must be knowing that it's not that the government has uh, not made similar efforts in the past. There were many initiatives in the past in the area of design and manufacturing. Uh, to cite a few, some of them have culminated into the state-of-the-art uh, prototyping uh, design and fabrication facilities like the ones available at IIT Bombay and IC Bangalore, uh, Shakti processor by IIT Madras, which Kunal has just discussed, which is being one of the most uh, closest effort by the academia towards an industry-grade deliverables, industry-grade processors. And uh, in fact, uh, I encourage all of you to please try your hands on the Shakti kit available in the open source. Uh, however, uh, the recent efforts towards semiconductor policy by and large is the mo most comprehensive, most concerted, biggest of all earlier efforts and the most ambitious efforts uh, to claim a much deserved leadership in the semiconductor area by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Like the one India claimed in the software domain during early 90s and because of it, the way we need more skilled manpower in the semiconductor area in the coming times because of the recent government trust, the right awareness on the career path and offerings need to be there among electronic students to stick to the domain while transitioning from the student life to the professional life. And I strongly believe that, uh, I mean, having such design marathons, if concluded well, uh, can play a very big role uh, by providing an early stage uh, visibility to the students on uh, choosing the VLSI domain as their career path. So uh, needless to mention, uh, eSpice is a wonderful circuit design and simulation flow, uh, combining best of the open source tools like NGSpice, very later in uh, GSDL giving a single window exposure to the worlds of the analog and digital simulation, device modeling and PCB design. So uh, welcome uh, on board and uh, on behalf of Ministry of Electronics and IT, thank you very much uh, to all the organizers for planning this activity uh, and uh, happy competing uh, for the next three weeks and all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nishit. So uh, now I would like to invite the chief guest, uh, Professor V. Kamakoti. Just yeah. one minute. Yes. Sagar is there. Okay. So uh, call him and then he can speak for a few minutes. Yes, and then sir. We will uh, call Professor Kamakoti. Yeah. Sure, sure, sir. So, uh, yeah, I would like to call Mr. Sagar Sharma, who is a senior investment specialist uh, in invest at Invest India. So, Invest India is the advisor, guide, and facilitator to every investor who's looking to explore India as an investment destination. Mr. Sharma has worked as a consultant in the Ministry of Education, Government of India. He has researched and analyzed various policies, including the National Education Policy 2020. He has also worked with PCS Innovations Lab Bangalore and NCETIS Mumbai. So he'll be talking about the India Semiconductor Mission. Uh, Mr. Sharma, over to you, sir. Uh, 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 Sagar, uh, Sagar, sir, what's your handle? Uh, the participant name, I'm not able to find. Oh. Anyone need uh, Yes, sir. Yeah, he has joined. He has joined. Oh, got it, got it, Sagar. Sir. Yeah, Sagar, sir. Yeah. All right, good. So we are good to go. Yeah, he has some problem with the video. Let him just speak for a few minutes. Yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Sa Sagar Sharma, over to you, sir. Uh, can you please? I don't know. There's audible. Uh, I, I'm I'm trying to unmute. Uh, hi. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Ha. Good evening. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Uh, hi, Professor Kanan. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi. I can see Nishit. I'm sorry, I couldn't switch on my video for some reason. 
but uh, uh, my greetings to all of you and you know uh, really excited to be uh, to be here and you know uh, congratulations many many congratulations to you for for the you know uh, the the inauguration of uh, this uh, really exciting uh, circuit design simulation eSIM uh, 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 marathon and uh, you know uh, professor kanan asked me to you know uh, talk a bit about uh, the india semiconductor commission so i'll just you know briefly uh, sort of summarize what india semiconductor commission is you know uh, so as you uh, may be aware about the uh, the uh, the approval of the uh, the semicon india program by the union cabinet on 15th of uh, december uh, last month and now you know uh, to to actually uh, you know uh, execute the long term strategy for india's semiconductor ecosystem you know we are we have set up the india semiconductor mission as an independent business division within the digital india corporation so digital india corporation is a section eight company of uh, of uh, you know uh, ministry of electronics and it you know and this the new uh, you know um, division within uh, within that digital india corporation is is uh, you know uh, india semiconductor mission that's the part of the the administrative entity of uh, identity of the mission but you know uh, in the in the in the spirit the, the, the spirit of the mission is you know uh, uh, as we all know that you know considering the importance of semiconductor the strategic importance and you know um, we 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 see like you know everything is digital now and everything digital is is nothing but semiconductor you know so how we can have uh, a very sustainable uh, ecosystem uh, focusing on uh, on the manufacturing aspect of it uh, and focusing on the, the the different components of the value chain be it of course the very important thing is the semiconductor design you know where we already have some 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 decent presence you know as a country but then you know the 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 manufacturing you know the the, the holy grail of the entire manufacturing is the semiconductor manufacturing so the, the 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 mission gives you know great emphasis on the on the manufacturing when it comes to manufacturing you know we we, uh, we there is clear understanding that you know uh, of course silicon c mos based technologies are important you know but then we have uh, the whole gamut of the compounds in the conductor the the packaging the assembly you know uh, testing masking and packaging the the oset space in the semiconductor you know uh, manufacturing so if you see right now for example you know for sub 10 nanometer technologies the 92% of the chips are coming from only one ge geography which is taiwan and the rest of the 8% is coming from korea which is your samsung you know so that is the level of uh, you know uh, the the geographical concentration is is there and you know we are a country whose fundamental philosophy is vasudev kutumbakam like the entire entire world is one family and and it is for the world now required to have a diversified semiconductor supply chain it is for the goodness of the, good, the greater good of the world that we have a diversified you know semiconductor supply chain and 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 we you know considering our fundamental philosophy and and the kind of actions which we are doing we are quite committed to it and this semiconductor mission is uh, is, the, is the is the fundamental driver to enable you know the strategy so uh, you know when when comes to the mission you know uh, like definitely you know as i mentioned the the design bit the the packaging bit and you know and and and, and also one of the very important you know uh, sort of uh, uh, component of any sustainable semiconductor supply chain is a, a, a very highly skilled talent pool a continuous you know supply of the talent pool so we have a, a clear understanding and that is why you know we have earmarked the 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 uh, total uh, you know around 2.5% of the of the incentive outlay which is which is around around 2000 crore only for the uh, you know development of the and the capacity building of of a sustainable you know pool of talent and uh, so uh, you know uh, that's about uh, the 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 overall you know mandate of the mission and how, so so we are also you know looking forward for the leadership you know the the, the so this mission will work you know uh, as a as a as a sort of you know uh, as a sort of company you know where we have a great amount of autonomy functional autonomy operational autonomy to take decisions and to you know design strategy so this mission will be will be led by a by a, a CEO supported by a CTO and a CFO. So these people will come from the semiconductor industry. You know, so very soon you will you will definitely hear the announcements regarding the kind of leadership we have already you know put the, the notification in the public domain that what kind of people we are looking for. So if you see those that notification, you will find out that you know these people are 
from from the industry and who are have the, the global networks and the global stature you know in the semiconductor industry you know um, so so that's the kind of leadership which will which will drive the india semiconductor mission you know so so yeah that's the overall uh, i think picture of the mission and i think uh, you know uh, if you have any any questions or queries you know i will be more than happy to 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 take them yeah let's take a look yeah okay uh, uh, thank you thank you sir so now i would like to uh, invite our chief guest for the evening professor v kamakoti the director of iit madras to inaugurate this marathon professor kamakoti received his ms and phd degrees in computer science and engineering from iit madras he joined the faculty of iit madras in 2001 and took over as its director in january 2022 He specializes in the area of computer architecture, information security, and VLSI design. He heads the microprocessor development program and the information security education and awareness program at IIT Madras, funded by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, Government of India. He is a member of the National Security Advisory Board. Dr. Kama Koti is the recipient of DRDO Academic Excellence Award. Indian Electronics and Semiconductor Association Techno Visionary Award Abdul Kalam Technology Innovation National Fellowship ACCS Lifetime Achievement Award IBM Faculty Award and Vasvik Industrial Research Award so sir we are very honored to have you here over to you sir meeting me thank you professor kanan kunal anaka uh, nishit nice to see you all Uh, i think uh, first uh, there is some ribbon cutting i need to do right kuna yes yes one minute sir yes sir you should enable screen sharing for me uh, uh, yes sir it is enabled now no sir try again i am not able to uh that can you try now sir yeah Yes. So, with all your permission, can I integrate? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So everybody, please unmute and clap. Everybody, please unmute and clap your hands. Okay. So I am stopping. So very good evening, and uh, first and foremost, I should congratulate uh, uh, Professor Kanan. and uh, the entire team which has put out this excellent uh, <clears throat> marathon uh, on mixed signal design right so if digital design is a monkey analog design is a drunkard monkey and mixed signal design is a drunkard monkey bit by a scorpion okay <laughs> that's the way people who actually work on it feel because in a digital design You know, lot of time things become very crazy. Is if you just start working on smaller designs, fine. But the moment you bring it to a larger design, like a microprocessor, suddenly, suddenly, one X will start propagating. God knows where, what. You would have done hundreds or hundreds of chips, but still, you know, there can be something which is a special DNA for every chip, which can land you in trouble. When you go to analog, at least in digital, it's going to be some program that you need to fix but when you go to analog and again start working on it it's going to be some parameter you want to tune but here when you go to mixer signal you really don't know whether to tune a parameter it will work or you have to fix a bug in your digital design so that is where the whole entire problem starts but today the entire world today is looking at mixer signal design two reasons completely it's all going to be driven by what we call as cyber physical systems right 
So there are going to be a lot of devices spread across the world, millions or billions of devices. And each of these devices will have electronics there. There will be some sort of a sensor. It can be uh, you know, a position center sensor. It can be an environment sensor. It can be a you know, uh, you know, moisture sensor, whatever. And then there is going to be some sort of processing at the field end. And that data has to be massaged. And then data should be you now transmitted back through a network into a cloud where certain decisions can be made. And uh, this is where things like 5G and other things are going to play a very important role. Now, given this, today we have 5G. Expectedly, it should give uh, something like, uh, you know, uh, yes, at least four to five times the bandwidth of a 4G. Now, the main concentration is on these devices. Right? So, and these devices are cannot be having a large form factor. We need to bring the bring down the cost of these devices. Typically, these devices will have a sensor which actually captures analog data, then an ADC, which converts it into a digital, and then it pumps back. And if there's going to be a two-way control, then we have an uh, we have the reverse part. From, uh, from, uh, from a controller to a DAC to again a sensor, which will do some reverse action. So having the analog components as a separate chip and the digital component separately, not only increases the form factor, increases the power consumption, and also increases the cost per device. Right? So there is no lot of, lot and lot more of, uh, Trust on trust on trying to make these mixed signal wherein the analog and the digital can coexist. And more importantly, <clears throat> these uh, devices all also need to be characterized, right? And the real confidence come when you are in a position to make a complete mixed signal based simulation of your idea, and that is where this particular marathon is going to help in a very great way, right? So anything that you touch is going to be a mixed signal. And this is, this is something very, very interesting where we are going to work on a mixed signal simulator and do a, a competition based on it. This is certainly the need, need of the day. And again, take this opportunity to congratulate uh, uh, Professor Kannan, Kunal, appreciate all of us here. I'm sure uh, in the next uh, part of our SMDP program, I think we will have such type of simulators uh, in a big way in the, these are all Indian simulators, uh, Atman Nirbhar, uh, indigenous uh, simulators. Now, in this context, I think uh, um, uh, Kunal, I just joined when Kunal was addressing, I think he was talking about risk five. This five actually plays a very important role. The simple reason is that when you start getting these microprocessors for these different devices, these microprocessors have to be in a very small form factor, number one. They should consume very less power. That means all these microprocessors need not have everything inside. Like it didn't, some microprocessors that you are putting for some application need not have floating point. Some may not even need uh, all the integer instructions. Some may just need a, a small set of instructions, right? So now there is a need to generate microprocessor for each one of these applications. An application does that environmental monitoring versus an application that is on a, a point of sale terminal. That's a huge difference. And we don't want to put the same processor at these two places that we are conceiving of will have a particular set of instructions that are needed. It may also need some special instructions. So this leads to a concept of what uh, uh, Patterson uh, mentioned uh, in his uh, Turing lecture as what we call as domain-specific architectures. 
right now risc 5 the processor that uh, we are working on is uh, is much suited for a domain specific architecture because you can keep adding new instruction deleting new instructions without you know major changes to the software infrastructure or minimal changes to the software infrastructure because the software is one which is critical if you don't have the software there's no point in having a hardware the software should completely exploit the different functionalities given to you with the hardware now in this case of the risc 5 we can quickly change the software with minor modifications to suit a hardware in which some traditional instructions are or conventional instructions are removed and even a new instruction is added or a new hardware is added so these are called ext extensible <coughs> instruction set architecture extensible in the sense that i can add a new instruction without violating the coding or the encoding of the previous instructions and they are very much suited for what we call as domain specific architecture so this way is something that everyone should invest their time and every university should get out from old 1985 manuals to bring it to this way to run certain embedded system and other type of programming courses right still we keep talking about old microcontrollers for whose use the, those microcontrollers are not even in the market they are only really archive pieces each piece is 8000 dollars because there are the last five or six pieces left in the world correct now what are the point in reading about them so we, we many universities need to graduate from what we call as uh, you know the, uh, the the history of microcontroller to actually contemporary microcontrollers where this five will play a big role here i also want to mention here that the ministry of electronics and information technology has been not only extending support for risc5 but also tried to promote risc5 we recently uh, concluded uh, so the swadeshi microprocessor challenge where more than 1000 teams attempted to work with risc5 100 teams were shortlisted for semi finals 30 for the finals and 10 teams actually got uh, 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 10 teams actually made to the finals and got prizes and all of them used this five process made by uh, iid madras the shakti family and cdac the vega family of process so i think a ris5 based mixed signal design a ris5 plus other sensors these are going to be extremely an interesting thing so if after post marathon of course one thing is that you know how to simulate but post marathon you should know how to uh, uh, you know practically prototype and make your set work on field and that is going to be a very very uh, big uh, learning lesson that you can all take up so yes the workshop is very exciting i am very happy i thank all for inviting me professor kannan for inviting me to inaugurate this workshop i wish the workshop all success and all of you who are who got, got got into mixed signal design continue your life in mixed signal design don't go to some for, you know finance agency and start writing java code after doing this okay continue so next 10 years you will be millionaires or billionaires right and if you remember me then come and present me on audi car okay thank you very much <laughs> thank you so much thank sir you. thank you sir thank you so much sir uh, thank you very much uh, i hope it was you know the, the students would be really motivated so uh, thank you sir so now i would uh, so like just to... one minute yes. i would like to uh, i'm doubly happy that uh, professor kamakoti could uh, join us as the chief guest uh, for two reasons because i am an alumnus of iit madras number one number two professor uh, kamakoti is pioneering work in this area so that it and not only that he used that work for uh, collaborative work 
to energize the student community, student, not only students, uh, I guess all designers across the country. It's an, uh, it's an amazing thing. We're really happy that you could join us. And um, uh, I think uh, we are starting on a good note. So we have 1,700 participants. Not all of them could join us for this inaugural, but uh, we have an exciting term, uh, time ahead. So we'll keep you posted about it. Thank you, Professor Kamakati. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Yes. So uh, now I would like to call uh, Mr. Sumantokar, who is a research assistant in the ESIM team of uh, FOSI at IIT Bombay. And uh, he'll be explaining to you the integration of MakerChip with ESIM. Uh, Sumanto, over to you. Hello, am I audible? Yes, Sumanto, you're audible. Yeah. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Okay, so I worked on this thing interface of eSIM with MakerChip and the feature of NGVRI. So, as, as uh, Kanan sir and uh, Kunal said about this eSIM and MakerChip, Steve said about MakerChip, eSIM is an open source software developed by 4C IIT Bombay and it is used for uh, simulation circuit design and PCB layout. And MakerChip is an online web browser app for simulation of digital circuits and developed by Redo DDA. The found, uh, Steve is the founder of Redo DDA. And uh, it is used for um, simulating very log, system very log and tier very log code. So, so what is the need for uh, interfacing of eSIM with Megachip? So eSIM is pure, uh, was purely analog. So as uh, Kanan sir told, um, we have had a feature of NGHDL, uh, so it was linking NGSPICE and um, uh, VHDL. So in, in order to facilitate a uh, mixed mode simulation, then we came up to, uh, then we got introduced to this, uh, to Steve Hoover of Redo DDA, and uh, he helped us to create NGVD. So using, uh, so in this interface, uh, one can run maker chip from ECM itself. And uh, since, uh, has, as shown by Steve, uh, negative already has uh, various advantages like uh, we can simulate a digital circuit. It has a very good interface. It has virtual virtualization. We had, a, um, as Steve showed you, that uh, different um, block diagram circuits can be seen in negative. So these are the advantages. And um, we also have a feature of virtual FPGA. So hence, uh, we thought of interfacing this negative and eSIM. Now, um, Steve also helped us to introduce this uh, NGVD feature in ESIM. So just like NGHDL, which was uh, a VHDL to NGSpace converter, we have this new feature called as Verilog to NGSpace converter, which all of you will be using in this marathon. And uh, so this one, uh, this uh, NGSpace, Verilog to NGSpace converter makes use of Verilator. So it converts uh, a Verilog code to C++ object files. And these object files are linked with the NGSpice objects using SPICE. And um, this way, the analog and digital simulation can be done uh, simultaneously, or the mixed mode simulation can be done. So here is the simple block, block diagram of uh, simulation. So here we have the analog SPICE code. We have a, a ADC bridge. It's a general bridge to connect the digital block and the analog block. And uh, here we have the objects of X space and the very letter. So these will be communicating within each other. These are actually links. So uh, they communicate uh, just like variables. And uh, we have the DAC bridge. And uh, so like this, this process continues in the simulation when we run a uh, netlist file. Then we have uh, this. Um, uh, in this, uh, so for more creation of model, these are uh, some of the steps uh, which uh, the NG space uh, goes through while um, uh, while creating a model of uh, Verilog in NG space. So first, uh, so these are not very much necessary, but uh, yeah, you will be coming across this while running the model. So yeah, here I have made a simple circuit. So this block is a four bit counter. The functionality of, a, of this is written in Verilog. Uh, and uh, we have the analog blocks through which we are giving the pulse um, inputs. 
and uh, so we are giving the clock and the reset and this adc bridge is connecting this analog block and digital block then we have this digital dac bridge which is connecting this four bit counter block and analog block so using ngvd this uh, digital block was uh, getting uh, was generated and uh, similarly we can even create processors and all very complicated circuits also if we have that very log code we can even use system very log we can even use uh, tl very log and um, and here we have the waveforms so here you can see the clock and this is the um, lsb bit then uh, second bit uh, first bit third bit zero bit first bit third bit, second bit and third bit so so we will be having a mock session tomorrow where we will be discussing about um, about the literature survey submission details and um, various about various other things about the marathon at around uh, 9 am to 10 am then thank you everyone all the best for the marathon do well and create very good circuits contribute to the nation thank you everything is for you yeah uh, thank you sumanto so now i would like to call uh, kunal and steve so uh, i would request you to please you know address the participants and explain them that you know, how can they perform in this and how how can they do participate or you know submit this uh, circuits in this marathon uh, over to you kunal and steve okay so uh, steve should i uh, uh, should i go first or do you want to uh... yeah please okay okay fine all right thank you all right so uh, uh, today uh, so, so this is for for uh, students and uh, okay so this is especially uh, you know for students for the participants okay so uh, now we'll listen to the whole instructions very carefully and again tomorrow there is a mock session where we are going to live demo everybody okay uh so dates the very important dates if you want you can take a snapshot of these dates 25th to 28th feb is somewhere uh, we are going to do the inauguration which is today and literature survey 28th feb is the initial report submission uh, first march to 6th march is the design implementation and 7th march to 10th march is the final report submission so these are the very important dates take a snapshot everything will be explained in detail tomorrow i am going to brief you about uh, all these things just now in a in, in few minutes uh, time so uh, the uh, inauguration which is uh, today 25th feb which is already been done uh, the marathon launch by iit bombay positive and it is it is already in progress what we are doing now then a live uh, uh, a live uh, demo full mix in the circuit design on maker chip platform so this is something um, we have already enabled for you i am going to send an email to everybody regarding that user regarding the login id and passwords uh, and the domain name on which you have to register and we are going to review some important dates that's the that's the first things so uh, uh literature review so yeah so from starting today till 28th feb you have to do a literature survey so what do you mean by literature survey it's basically a research <clears throat> you just need to go to google.com and research about mixed signal design you will be also given some reference documents on the platform which i'm going to uh, share in a couple of uh, in a couple of hours from now i'm going to share a platform uh, login with you you just need to log into the platform there are some dedicated videos available over there uh, which has been made by our team actually by shubanto uh, and um, uh, uh, those videos will help you to understand understand what mix signal is so that's all you need to do for the next uh, next uh, uh, three days you just need to take a take a piece of paper you need you need to take a, a pen or pencil and start drawing start scribbling on that paper and and pour or whatever ideas you have in the area of mix signal so google about what mix signal is watch one of those videos on the platform uh, try to understand what it is happening it's it's understand it, it's basically um, you know explain in great detail we have uh, we have explained the whole thing in in, in very much detail uh, starting from a very basic block to an advanced risk five block so we have done everything over there um, it's a, it's a compact uh, i think a 60 minute to 90 minute uh, session so just watch through um, that video and uh, and uh, let uh, let me um, uh, you know uh, let, let us let us hear from uh, this person He's, he was one of our student paras gir what does literature review actually it means to all of you let, let me play this one so this is the first stage as i discussed earlier so i always recommend to go through or start with the books okay and uh, for analog ips razavi is like a god okay uh, yeah no kidding 
so this is the first book where you can find almost each and every concepts of analog basic fundamentals and everything and uh, for the higher level or uh, if you want to go through depth of a PLL uh, last year they have published this another book wonderful book actually uh, this is entirely uh, entire full book on PLL okay if you are if you like this IP if you find this interesting definitely go through this and uh, there are some concepts uh, some new implementations and some research going on every single time uh, by many researchers awesome researchers you can go through their research work and find some different ideas and uh, if you find some uh, research gap you can implement your own ideas and publish your own paper right okay so this is how I did first I went through books and then I went through some uh, research papers there are you can see just three of them but actually I went through around 25 30 okay so once you do the research paper what next so you need to submit your idea in this particular format and um, uh, again again the steps to uh, upload the design on the on the platform and on the um, eSIM website those all things will be explained tomorrow in detail we are going to do a live demo also but you need to submit everything in an IEEE format the title of what you wish to design for example i'll give an example let's say a, a, a digital a digital logic uh, plugged with a pll very simple you just need to uh, take the clock pin of the pll and give give it to the uh, to the digital logic very simple mixing design or for example if you have a counter and if you want to dump the uh, digital bits of the counter to a uh, to a d2a converter again it again forms under the uh, comes under the category of mixed signal so these are very sim simple designs which you can think of and um, uh, give give a good name to your design and uh, mention title over here your name college name uh, give an abstract of your of your um, uh, paper what you you know what you are uh, planning what your idea what you plan to do in the marathon give an abstract give a reference uh, details about your circuit uh, some waveforms which you expect and some reference papers which you have used during the uh, during the hackathon this is a typical sample of a literature uh, uh, review paper. So if you see this student, um, uh, she is uh, Pooja Sawalkar, uh, at Tehran Engine College, uh, Nehru, Mumbai, uh, uh, design of a low dropout voltage regulator. So this was a different marathon. It was a different uh, uh, hackathon. It was specifically focused on uh, in a circuit design part over here. Uh, but this is the kind of the format. So you can either hand draw uh, uh, the diagrams which is which which I feel is very good because you learn a lot once you draw things on your own, and you can you can also use softwares like PowerPoint and all to to make your designs to make to draw your you know, circuit diagrams. You can you can use all of it, but this is the kind of paper that we expect at the end of uh, at the end of twentieth. So in twentieth Feb is the uh, uh, date when you're going to submit the uh, initial report. Next, uh, uh, once you uh, once you submit your initial report. Uh, uh, let me go to the this is the initial report and once you submit the initial report uh there will in be this a, video we are going to see yeah so once you um, submit your initial report uh you know there will be a selection criteria and uh, some of you who successfully submit the uh, the design you will be given access to the labs on cloud there is a cloud uh, uh, lms that we have created so we'll be given an access uh, your login id password everything will be shared with you in detail and you need to implement your idea what you what you submitted on the platform on the on the tools which are available on the platform and uh, and of course uh, uh, you know without uh, without a detailed video uh, of what to do uh, you might not be able to use the labs on the platform so that's why you will be supported by a by a, a video tutorial on the cloud itself you just need to watch the video tutorial about how do you basically use the tool and you need to uh, you know use the tool accordingly to implement your design I'll give you a demo of the uh, of the video. Uh, you know, this is a short video, and uh, this is how uh, there will be elongated two hour video that will be shared with you on the platform, and this is how the video will look like. The mix mode simulation in eSIM. So let us see the overview. So the the tools used in this uh, video would be eSIM. So I'll play uh, uh, play this a bit uh, faster so that uh, you know we can accommodate the time. And um, and make a chip. So ECM is open source EDA for circuit simulation. It is developed by FOSI IIT Bhopal. And make a chip is a web browser IDE to develop uh, simulate uh, Verilog system Verilog and TL Verilog code. It is developed by Redwood EDA. So the features used uh, here are is uh, NGVery. So NGVery is a uh, simulator which converts uh, uh, ng-spice 
which links in this space and very little to get the mixed mode as shown here mixed mode simulation so in this space analog plus very little digital equal to ng very mixed mode simulation so let us see the interface of eSIM. Uh, and so here we have the button of uh, ng very microchip so by clicking on this uh, the user can open the interface now this is the in interface of uh, ng very microchip so first we at first we have this at uh, top level verilog file so using this the user may load the verilog file then we have the refresh button so using this if the uh, file is edited uh, locally then uh, it gets refreshed whenever the user clicks on this button and we have uh, a save button to save the file if the, the user edits the file here and um, we have this edit in microchip option so this option opens the microchip app uh, so the user can edit simulate the uh, the program in microchip and uh, this is the um, editor uh, editor to edit the um, verilog system verilog or tail verilog code so whenever the um, user clicks on this add top um, top level verilog file so it gets added here and he or she can edit the file here accordingly and by clicking on this add other file button we can add all the other files included uh, by the um, top level file which was uh, uploaded in the maker chip this button and this tab and uh, we have the add folder option uh, add folder button so using this uh, the user can add all the dependency folder folders um, which is needed by the top level uh, verilog file and uh, we have this clear terminal so whenever this in the user clicks on this terminal uh, this this button so this uh, whatever is present in this terminal gets erased the user gets a lint of error here suppose uh, he gets um, uh, no uh, new line error lint of error so he can um, copy the um, line here from here and paste it here and uh, click on add lint of and it will get added in the list now we are going to see learning other features of eSIM to learn the other features of eSIM one may visit the website of spoken tutorial this is the link to the spoken tutorial other reference links are uh, https uh, eSIM.4c.in and https www.makerchip.com so from the first one one can uh, know more about eSIM and from the second link uh, one may know uh, about uh, makerchip so that's all thank you okay so uh, as you saw this particular video the level of details which is explained this whole set of video will be will, will be provided to you uh, you know uh, in few hours from now and um, you'll be able to uh, uh, look into the videos watch the videos and use that as a reference and start your research because research is very important we need to uh, set up a target or a target or design idea which you want to implement and then the next uh, uh, few days you're going to implement it so this video this uh, this uh, uh, set of videos will be available to you um, starting today itself uh, and you have to use this set of videos uh, uh, to implement your whole design <clears throat> okay so once you once you are able once you you know implement your whole design you have to submit another paper um, in, a, in a in a github format and, and we'll be introducing you to what is github.com uh, and things like that so you will be introduced to this particular uh, topic as well on that topic on that uh, particular website you need to upload another another uh, uh, submission which is your final submission so now this participant participant circuit design and the waveforms should be from your tool you should be logging in eSIM and, and that particular circuit snapshot has to be pasted over here and the actual waveforms that you get from the software that has to be pasted over here now the trick over here is if your So if your one page literature survey, which you submitted at the beginning, which is in, uh, which is on 20th Feb, if that matches with your final submission, it basically tells to us that the hackathon is basically successfully completed. You will, tell, you will get a certificate on your name saying that you have successfully completed the marathon or the hackathon. 
okay so it, there, there might be uh, there might be many questions you know there are only many questions now uh, and uh, we are going to solve it one by one uh, but uh, i think um, i hope the general idea is is clear to everybody and i'm going to share the um, recording uh, session of this particular uh, you know of this particular uh, uh, session so you can watch the recording and and uh, start looking at it and and, and follow the techniques that uh, been been shown over here and there are a couple of questions can we use cadence no <laughs> this uh, easy marathon so why do you want to use cadence uh, why don't we design uh, everything using cmos i mean all digital like this everything will be cleared we know everything will be cleared uh, all the questions will be answered tomorrow so tomorrow make sure you attend the session between 9 am to 10 am and yeah uh, and where we have to submit the initial report submission again we have to do it on the website uh, itself and so i would suggest better to submit uh, better to attend tomorrow session and where we are going to explain everything from scratch uh, and yeah uh, steve uh, over to you yeah, I mean, I really don't have much to add. I think Kunal's done a good job of giving a, a summary of what you're going to uh, be exposed to. I mean, basically, the point of this session is just to give you a heads up about what's to come. You'll get the details in the morning about, you know, exactly how to go about, uh, you know, preparing for the workshop and picking your circuit and so on. Um, so we don't need to go into all those details now. But uh, just again, welcome to the workshop, and uh, I hope everybody enjoys it. And uh, I think we'll get some very interesting circuits by the end of the th these three weeks. All right, good. So yeah, that's all. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Uh, so we are towards the end of this uh, ceremony. So I would just uh, like to call uh, Mrs. Usha Vishwanathan, the senior project manager of Fossi, to give away uh, to give a formal vote of thanks. Usha, over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Yash. So thank you everyone for attending the inauguration of the mixed signal circuit design and simulation marathon using eSIM. I would like to thank the, all the dignitaries who spoke and inspired the participants of this marathon. And we are sure that the participants will also hugely benefit from this marathon and uh, they will also be contributing to the open source community. So you have taken a very good step. So please continue the journey with us till the end of this marathon. And we also, I also would like to thank the funding agency, the Ministry of Education, Government of India. And uh, I will also like to thank Professor Kannan Mothgalia, our PI, who is the driving force uh, behind the FOSI project. And uh, uh, the FOSI project is the one who is organizing this uh, event along with the PSD and Redwood EDA. And lastly, I would like to thank the marathon team who is actually tirelessly working for the past uh, one month or so to put yes. together these uh, uh, facilities and uh, the platforms uh, for you to uh, do this marathon smoothly. And uh, I also like to wish all the participants a very best of luck and uh, do your best and uh, win exciting prizes. Thanks. Yeah. So especially, you know, uh, uh, good that you thank the whole uh, team. They really worked very hard. Uh, Shumanto, Madhuri, Steve, yeah. uh, and uh, Rohint, uh, uh, a lot of members. So yeah, good, uh, uh, Charan, everybody. Uh, so yeah, so everybody, um, um, uh, yeah, give your 100%. Uh, be, uh, be quite original to the design ideas that you're going to submit. Tomorrow, we're going to explain the whole thing. And uh, finally, we have come to an end to the session. So it's, uh, it's a photo session time. Uh, everybody just uh, turn on your cameras and uh, we'll do a quick photo photo session everybody uh, just turn on your cameras uh, and anaga will take a quick picture <clears throat> so we do this every time uh, and we love uh, sharing success and memories uh, of every hackathon and every marathon in the future okay so everybody just turn on your cameras uh, and so they can we can take a quick uh, photo session okay all right do this v v is for victory v in front of the camera and anaga is going to take a quick picture V and a smile. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're taking some more pictures. All right, great, great. Thanks, thanks everybody. Thanks for joining. Uh, yes, over to you. Yeah, uh, so thank you. We are uh, the end. And uh, I guess so, I, I wish all the best to all the participants. Uh, the further details, you know, about the session tomorrow will be shared by Kunal. So I, I hope everyone would, you know, join tomorrow morning on time and uh, please uh, ask whatever queries you have, you can just resolve them. Uh, the team would be happy to help. Yeah. So uh, with this, we can wind it up Kunal for the day.
yes yes and for yeah. uh, for participants who came late uh, uh, participants want to leave can leave but who came late i am uh, uh, playing the promo video again so enjoy the enjoy the promo video thank you sugar and i have a few questions can we think of a life of one and zeros can we talk in the language of ones and zeros which computers understand quite boring right but computer understands only ones and zeros so what can be done so introducing all you all to the mix signal a way to interface between the natural world analog and the digital world of computers so we have a few examples in our daily life like digital thermometer smartphone smart washing machine which we use every day and uh, have and these all have uh, analog as well as digital blocks So here is the simple block diagram of uh, mix signal. So to build a mix signal, one needs an analog block and a digital block, an analog circuit and a digital circuit, and uh, one needs to give an input signal as analog and get the output as digital. So welcome you all to the mix signal marathon using eSIM, where we can learn, design, and implement mix signal and uh, merge the world of analog and digital. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Mohammad Khalid Khan. Hai. और आज मैं आपसे एक सवाल पूछने वाला हूँ क्या हम और आप सिर्फ जीरो और वन में बात कर सकते हैं क्या हमारी और आपकी बात करने का माध्यम सिर्फ और सिर्फ जीरो वन हो सकता है अगर हम ए बी सी डी और सखा ना यूज करके सिर्फ हम जीरो वन में बात कर सकते हैं क्या काफ़ी अजीब सा सवाल है ये लेकिन सोचने की बात यह है कि कंप्यूटर्स मशीन सिर्फ और 